Hey, happy Friday, everybody. Mark again here at Weatherman Plus. Now, we have a unique pattern coming with these cold fronts all the way into the beginning of May, even a little bit coming in May. But it is bringing a potential southern outbreak as well as the east coast. A lot of serious storms coming with a lot of low pressure building up, a lot of vortice, a lot of circulation coming, and it could be a lot of serious weather coming now you see we do have our severe weather for today and for tomorrow we actually have a water spout that's out there in there in the gulf of mexico now so thank god this is staying in the gulf it's not going to be a tornado on ground but you do have a tornado threat for today and for tomorrow for the severe weather plus what is coming now you can see with ace triple r that we do have these cells coming all the way through and sometime in the late evening Anytime around 4 to 6 p.m., you have these strong cells coming through Louisiana and going through Mississippi. So that has a chance to flare up some of these into a potential tornado. Now, as we go through tomorrow, this is going to go all the way over. And you have some severe thunderstorms that's coming through the Carolinas. You get a daytime heating that lasts a little longer than what you have coming over Florida. And it has a better chance to form up and bring in some severe storms, maybe some hail maybe some damage and winds. But as these go up towards Maryland, Delaware, Southern Virginia, this is all bringing chances for tornadoes for tomorrow, as well as you go through the evening when you get that daytime heating. Then we're going into this pattern. And just for comparison, you can see your winds aloft for tomorrow that are not really strong, but you do get a little bit of brown in there, some very dark reds. So that right there is enough winds aloft to bring rotation, to bring stronger winds aloft in different directions than you have on a ground level and give you a chance for your tornado threat, a small threat for tomorrow. And we have stronger winds coming to the south and the southeast with this next pattern. Now you can see for today from National Weather Service, there's a chance for wind and there's a chance for hail, even significant hail right here for southern Texas. But you do have a chance for tornadoes. You have that 2% for those cells that's passing through this evening. And here's your cities and states at risk for today. Now for tomorrow, there is chances for wind and there's chances for hail as well for the east coast. But there is a low 2% chance for tornadoes for those cells that's coming through that I did show you. This is for North Carolina, Virginia, going to Maryland, Delaware. Here's your main cities and states within a 25 mile radius that's at risk for the tornado threat for tomorrow, for Saturday. But you can also see with your Arctic Oscillation, this is going to be our big culprit. So we have this cold air that's coming down. Everybody's feeling this morning. You're going to feel it tomorrow. You're going to feel it on the 23rd, 24th, maybe a little bit on 25th. But we have another dip of cold air coming in anytime from the 27th through the end of the month. And maybe even another one that would be a slightly less intense cold weather in the beginning of May. And you can see this from National Weather Service next 6, 10 day probability temperatures will be well above average on the West Coast while you're well below average in all of this region. This is all the way towards the 30th. Then when you go from the 8 to 14 days, which goes all the way to the 4th, you can see you stay well below average from the center to the East Coast of the U.S. So as we quickly go through this, you can see for today, you have some nice daytime high temperatures. You're starting to get warm in the southeast as well as the south. And your highs for today will be frozen in some regions. Tomorrow, you have some very cold temperatures coming through. Freezing temperatures start reaching down towards the south. This is your morning lows. But with the wind chills, is bringing teen temperatures and single digits to the upper Midwest and getting a lot of people feel like they're in the 20 degree temperatures with negative temperatures coming to the higher elevations in the Rocky Mountains. But it will warm back up for tomorrow. You have all this daytime heating going on all the way from the West Coast all the way to the East Coast. But you can see your highs will stay freezing for some people. Now, as you move through Sunday... The cold front will come back in again. These are your morning lows. You're still going to be in freezing temperatures and it's still bringing a nasty wind chill. You're not going to be in freezing temperatures for the Ohio Valley, but it's still showing you're going to be some very cold wind chills coming through your way as well as the upper Midwest, North Central, and the Rocky Mountains and start coming somewhat to the south, but that's about as bad as it's going to get. It will warm right back up for Sunday and you still have this upper level low over Texas, still making your daytime highs in the 40s. Now, as we go through Monday, this is going to swish over a little bit with your morning lows. But once again, it is going to warm right back up for Monday. Then as you go through Tuesday, it's going to swish in again. A lot of morning low cold temperatures coming through. And it will warm back up for Tuesday as well. A lot of people, their highs are going to be in the 40s. 
Now, as we go from the 28th to the 29th, your morning lows is going to be over the Rocky Mountains and the Northwest. We're going to a different pattern, so it won't affect the Southeast no more, but a lot of people are going to be in the 40s for the morning lows and some people in freezing conditions. Now, you do see it warms right back up all the way from the West Coast in the 70s all the way towards the East Coast in the 70s and get into the 80s for the South, even 90s in some areas. This is for the 29th. Now, as we go in the beginning of the May, we're going to go on this big warm-up. It's going to seem like it's going to be spring again. Very warm temperatures on the 3rd. As you go through the 4th, very warm temperatures as well. It's going to raise way up. And this is going to move our severe weather line further to the west instead of over here in the southeast. This is the beginning of May. But once again, once you go into the morning of the 5th, these are your morning lows as spring and cooler temperatures for the northern half of the U.S. and the west coast while the southeast and the east coast stays warm. But your highs for the 5th will be well above average and very much hot temperatures in the south and the southeast, 80s and 90s, while it stays somewhat in the 50s for everyone else. So we have a lot of warm temperatures coming, but a lot of cool temperatures as well. And you can see as we have these cool temperatures coming, bringing these storms to the northeast, for tomorrow, you can see the pattern that we're about to go into. We have more cold air coming in all the way from the 24th, and it's going to swing all the way in towards the northeast as you go towards the end of the month. But at the same time, we get a lot of surface lows forming up over here in the south, and this is bringing a lot of storms all the way from the south all the way to the northeast, and there is an outlook for that. This is going to happen multiple times, multiple surface lows forming up, maybe even staying along the coast which would be a better outcome than on land and when we look even further ahead maybe in the beginning of may when we get all them very warm temperatures we might have a strong anomaly forming over the west coast could be a problem for california once again but you can see all these very warm temperatures come up while we go on this high ridge and this is going to change our position on our severe weather and we still get that surface low in the gulf of mexico it still dissipates right before it gets towards florida but once we get into Tuesday, we start getting multiple surface lows forming up in the south while we get this tropical jet feeding moisture from the southwest. And those all come together and bring some serious storms towards the south, the southeast, and the northeast all the way up to the 29th. And there is an outlook for some flooding for that time. Because you can see with your dew points as we go into Tuesday, we get a very strong dry line. We get a lot of strong dew points in the south carries over towards the southeast while we're getting multiple low pressures forming up and it does carry towards the northeast and as you can tell the dew points don't carry too far towards the northeast so it could be a system forming right offshore towards the northeast and this is bringing some high 60s all the way across the south swinging all the way across the southeast bringing high 60s for y'all as well as you go through the 27th the 28th and then maybe something forming up at the end on the 29th and maybe the 30th headed towards the northeast. So I will keep you updated as we get closer, but so far it's looking like it will be a south, a southeast, and potentially northeast problem. Bringing once again a lot of cape, a lot of lift in the south for Tuesday, even stronger for Wednesday than as it goes towards Thursday, it goes towards the east coast. So hopefully it pushes a little bit further. So far, the cold fronts don't look like they're going that deep. So it won't push it all the way in the Gulf. I think this will affect the Gulf states and potentially the southeast. I think the northeast, it could maybe potentially go away and be a little too far. But there could be a storm system forming up. And you can see this better here. So as you go through Monday, we still get that surface low forming up in the Gulf. And it does dissipate, guys. It crashes right before it goes towards Florida. Becomes a group of disorganized thunderstorms now once you go through tuesday you get all that lift you get all them dew points you get a surface low form up you get a lot of storms now keep in mind this is with the ural this is not a high resolution model and we're already seeing some strong storms forming up for tuesday for wednesday still have a surface low in the south as it goes towards the east and as you go through thursday and more storms and more potential surface low forming up which brings rotation in the atmosphere even another potential low pressure forming up in the south. This cold front, this pattern we're going into, is going to bring potential front-induced lows all across the south and southeast, 
also into the Gulf and across the East Coast. So we do need to watch out for this pattern, guys, because it could turn very strong. Because when you look at your winds aloft, you can see how much stronger they are than what we're dealing with today and tomorrow. As these surface lows form up, we get a lot of strong winds that form up on the east side of it. And this could help bring a potential tornado threat. As you go from Tuesday into Wednesday, it stays strong. As you go through Thursday, it stays strong as well for the northeast. So this could bring a lot of problems for the south, the southeast, and the northeast with severe weather forming up. Plus, we have another system that's going to be formed over the upper Midwest that's going to bring a little bit of snow with that as well. Now, GFS is not a high-resolution model, but you can see as it forms up in those surface lows and pushes to the east that you do get some bowing out in these storms, so it could bring some damage and winds with that as well, especially for Wednesday. Storms forming up, high winds up aloft, and we get a lot of bowing out in the features as it goes out through the northeast and potential low pressures forming up in the Gulf as well. So these cold fronts are going to bring some very crazy patterns. And so far it is bringing heavy precipitation, two inches plus from the south central all across the Tennessee, Kentucky Valley, the deep south, the southeast, mid-Atlantic, and the northeast. A lot of heavy rainfall coming. And you can see this with the Euro as well, bringing a lot of heavy rainfall coming with this next system. And you see how it didn't really affect the Northeast too much. It pushed offshore because you don't have a lot of lift, but something could be forming up over here. We will watch it. But a lot of heavy precipitation, a lot of flooding that's going to be coming with this system for sure. Now, Climate Prediction Center did put out a risk for heavy precipitation from the 28th through the 4th. For the southeast and the east coast, the whole east coast is under this watch. I will keep you updated. Now, National Weather Service don't have anything out for this yet. It literally is starting in five days, guys. So April 26th, SIPS does have a chance for severe weather. April 27th, it has a chance for severe weather. And April 28th, it has a chance for severe weather while we go through this transition. And you know I will keep you updated, guys. So remember, I will keep you updated on Sunday's video. Now, that we are giving away another solo weather station for today. If you've never been here before, you must be a subscriber. You must hit the like button and put the comment, Weatherman. I will call out the winner on Sunday. Connects to National Weather Service, weather on the ground. You get wind updates every 17 seconds. And it's very easy to install. You can put it on a pole. You can put it on a fence. You can put it on your porch. It's so easy to install. It is a great weather station. Now, we'll keep you updated on this system and what happens out of it because it's starting to look a little worrisome. A lot of front-induced lows could be a pretty serious thing. A little far to be sure exactly what's going to happen. Let's just keep our heads up, and I will notify you as we get closer and closer. But until then, be joyful, guys. The severe weather has pretty much passed away, except for what we have in the south, the southeast, and the northeast. It's kind of mild, but it is bringing some storms. Other than that, be joyful, guys. Life is good. We're alive every day. Just be thankful enough for that. Everything else is a bonus <laughs> after that. Today, I want to talk to you with Isaiah 61, 10 and 11. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my God. For he hath clothed me with the garments of salvation. He hath covered me with the robe of righteousness, as a bridegroom decketh himself with ornaments, and as a bride adorneth herself with her jewels. For as the earth bringeth forth her bud, and as the garden causeth the things that are sown in it to spring forth, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring forth before all the nations. Amen. Have a very great day, everybody. God bless you and your families. Thank you to all of you that has been helping with the food drive. Remember, if you ever want to help out with the feeding people things that I've been doing here ever since the beginning, I still do it. I'm still trying to open up my kitchen so I can have a daily feeding going on. But remember, if you ever want to help out with that, you can always email me for my address or you can contact me through the links that I have in the description. And thank you so much for everyone that has been helping with the food drive. God bless you so much. It is going to help a lot of people. But remember, all glory always goes to God, our Father in heaven, Yahweh. And I pray you have a very thankful and a very blessed weekend this weekend. I will see you on Sunday. <laughs>
Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. God bless you all. Have a very great weekend.